Hi everybody, this is Mark Hamilton for The Right Report, and I'm coming to you after the presidential primary and Hillary Clinton's double-digit victory. Um, this, is, this is great, and I'm going to try to get through this in one take. I've got all sorts of stuff stacked up that I want to talk about, so let me get going right now, because I was thinking about this election, and, and, I, and I was watching the returns last night, and I was looking at all the dour faces on CNN, and all the smiling faces on Fox, which was kind of interesting, but then of course it's actually obvious, because your CNN types, you know, they're like all in the tank for Obama, so basically they were, they were pretty upset that Hillary pulled off a double-digit victory, because this means the fight goes on, and that's really bad for Barack Obama. Well, on the other hand, the people on Fox seemed a little bit happy. In fact, I found it amazing that Terry McAuliffe, of all people, called Fox News Channel fair and balanced because they called the election for Hillary first. Anyway, um, having said that and being absolutely amused by the entire thing, I was thinking about a scenario for the Democrat nomination going forward in which if Hillary Clinton doesn't intentionally want to lose the nomination to Barack Obama, it might make a really, really good plan B. And let me tell you how I got there. Um, the Democrat Party has a couple of camps, you know, a couple of factions or elements. There's the hard left element, which we've talked about, represented by Howard Dean and John Kerry and a bunch of other folks. And then there's the centrist camp, which is basically the Democrat leadership council camp, which is really the Clinton camp of the party. These two camps have fought for a long time over control and control of the Democrat party, kind of waxes and wanes between this hard left element and the centrist element. Well, the really interesting thing about the 2008 election is that if you go back a year when the campaigns were getting underway, the Clinton wing of the party kind of thought it had a slam dunk on the nomination and even on the general election because after all look at what happened in 2004 the leftist wing led by John Kerry went down in flames to George Bush so what's the result the Clinton wing the centrist wing takes over and kind of gets control of the party and the party apparatus and the and the fund-making machine, and gets to rig the system and do everything they want to do. And it was a really bad year for Republicans in 2007. So there you have this, so there you have the sense of entitlement, right? The Clintons feel, oh boy, this is going to be a slam dunk or a cakewalk, basically. The nomination and the presidency is basically ours. Well, things didn't quite work out that way. As events unfolded, I actually believe the Republican Party stumbled into the most electable candidate that could have emerged from their nomination process, namely John McCain. He's got a lot of broad appeal, he's a centrist, he's a maverick, the media likes him, he's not identified with the hard right wing of the Republican Party. McCain really is a very strong Republican candidate, especially with how unpopular George Bush is. So what happens? The Republicans close on McCain very crisply and very succinctly. Meanwhile, some snafus with how Hillary manages her campaign, some snafus by Bill Clinton, and the next thing you know, you've got this tight race where both candidates, Obama and Clinton, have to go negative. And this starts, and it builds on itself, and it feeds on itself, and it's tit for tat. And both Democrat candidates are getting damaged and damaged and damaged and damaged. And so here we are. So here we are in April. Okay? And believe me, the race is tight in terms of popular votes. If you actually count the votes cast in Michigan and Florida, Hillary Clinton has more popular votes than Barack Obama. Even though Barack Obama has a lead in terms of the delegate count. So think of the situation now. You have two badly damaged Democrat candidates, and what's going to happen is that if there's actually a fight at the Democrat convention, which is the last week of August, if there's actually a fight and the nomination fight goes to the convention floor, they don't come out 
of the convention with a candidate until like September 7th, September 8th. Well, the Republican convention is going to basically hog the news cycle. And so while the Democrat convention is probably going to end like on August 30th or something, oh man, it is really going to be tough. It is going to be tough for whoever the Democrat candidate is to win if this fight goes all the way to the floor. So the way I am basically looking at this, and I'm going to make a prediction, okay, the Obama wing of the Democrat Party, the hard left wing, is going to push, 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 push right now to get her out because they know they need time to vet their candidate and to solidify the party so they can go ahead. However, thinking for the long term, Hillary Clinton's best bet and only bet is going to be to go all the way to Denver to take the fight to the convention floor <clears throat> and to make absolutely sure that if Barack Obama does actually win and emerge the candidate that he's so badly damaged that he goes down in flames. If you use, you know, if you use the analogy of a boxing match, which I heard Dick Morris use, there may be a 15 round fight in which Barack Obama wins because Hillary went for the knockout on February 5th and missed. However, there's going to be another fight. And in that fight, Barack Obama may be so bloodied and so battered by a Hillary Clinton campaign going all four months throughout the summer and onto the convention floor that he can't possibly win in November. He might go down in flames. I think she's hoping he goes down in flames. His wing of the party will have lost credibility and Clinton Inc. will basically gain control of the Democrat Party. And then they will have control of the fundraising apparatus and the way primaries are held and the entire Democrat Party system so that four years from now Hillary can basically come back and once again run for an open seat as John McCain probably decides to retire and step down. So in my view folks, Hillary Clinton and Operation Chaos are right in sync and not necessarily because she wants to be the nominee but that even if she doesn't get to be the nominee, the extended fight that goes on is basically going to set her up for a really good run at the presidency four years from now. And so I'm making a prediction that she's going all the way, all the way to the convention, a bloody, damaging fight. She will not let Barack Obama become president of the United States. It's not about the party. It's about Clinton, Inc., and how they're basically going to pull off either Hillary's election this November or Hillary's election in November four years from now. So mark my words and watch this. It's going to be a hoot. And this is Mark Hamilton signing off for The Right Report.